95.3 WBCK, our Michigan Department of Transportation update at this time each week. And Nick Sharippa is back on the line with us. Are you uh, ready for the uh, springy weekend, sir? Uh, more than anyone can possibly imagine. I tell you what, man, I was joking. It's, it's, weird. it's weird. It's been a mild winter, too. Why are we all so excited I'm about not- a good weekend? It's know. not like we're coming out of hibernation. I don't get it. I know. Anyway, it's funny. Spring. It is a weird thing, but it's funny, and I'm thrilled about it. I was telling Nick off the air a minute ago that I was joking about pressing Bermuda shorts and getting outside. He's he's going to wear them with wrinkles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bask in their wrinkly glory. Yeah. Like, I'm all right with that. <laughs> Sometimes the work uh, that MDOT does doesn't necessarily have to do directly with roads. Sometimes it's trees. <laughs> And, uh, uh, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when called to it, we've seen quite a bit publicized about these trees over at that old Don Pablo's building in Battle Creek, which were M dot trees, right? Yeah, the, the trees along, I guess it'd be the east side of that property, uh, right there at the corner of Beckley and M sixty six I one ninety four, what have you. Uh, yeah, yeah. There were there were several trees there that are in a right of way, or were in a right of way. So what would have been the normal protocol then if, if that property owner wanted to do something along these lines? Uh, they obviously skipped a step, and that is trying to figure out what where the line was, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it, some of this conversation is still kind of coming to light. Um, it, it appears that there's a possibility that they had a survey done, but it was done incorrectly. Oh. Uh, but normally, yeah, if there's... Uh, if there's a, an encroachment issue or, or if they want to do some work on MDOT uh, right away on, on state property, uh, it's just a matter of working with our, our, our local office, in this case it would be the marshal office, and uh, securing permits if, if they're allowed to do the work or, or being told that they're not allowed to do it and kind of finding that, that delineation, that line of demarcation to know where they can work up to. So uh-huh. uh, that step seems to have been skipped. And those trees had a function there in terms of, of what MDOT expects. Yeah, you know, usually people see trees and they think sound barrier, and it's not entirely accurate. Um, although trees are, to a slight extent, yeah, uh, a sound barrier. Uh, for the most part, it's just visual. Um, a lot of times we'll put trees up because it's a, a great, it's a good visual line of demarcation. Um as hedgerows are in farms. Yeah. It's that same kind of concept. Uh, it, it, they're a lot prettier to look at than a fence. Uh, so um, they serve that purpose, and they're just nicer to look at than traffic. Well, it makes sense. Uh, does MDOT go around checking to make sure those trees are still there? I mean, that seems like a pretty big job. Um, it's not something we do actively, per se. Uh, certainly, if we're on a construction site, you know, just this past summer, uh, we had a project on US-131, uh, and part of that project was going all the way back to a right-of-way fence, replacing right-of-way fence where needed, uh, and really working on the trees in our right-of-way and, and making sure the trees that were in our right-of-way were healthy. And, you know, we got rid of some that weren't and some that were too small and um, just kind of maintaining that tree line. So it's not something we do actively and just drive around and check trees, but it's usually incorporated in other projects. Yeah. And so in this case, uh, somebody brought it to your attention. Uh, yeah, actually, our permit agent uh, happened to be driving by and saw a contractor removing those trees, uh, stopped and said, hey, let's pump the brake, fellas. <laughs> uh, we can't be doing this. So that contractor backed out, uh, left virtually immediately and stopped. Uh, but then there was some confusion with the developer. They actually got another contractor to come in and finish the job. Uh, so Wow. Yep. So, so we're, we're in conversation now with the contractor, with the property owner, with the city. Uh, there's some ongoing conversations there, and, and our goal, uh, it sounds like the developer is pretty uh, amenable to the idea of just replacing those trees. Okay. I got about a minute left, but Nico's been reporting on these other trees now as well that you're clearing out that has some effect on some homeless encampments. Uh, yeah, and this is certainly is not a... a, a a topic that's unique to Battle Creek. I mean, anywhere where MDOT has any kind of wooded right of way, um, we try to work with communities to keep those those wooded rights of way, those wooded areas, uh, clear and clean. Yeah, um, we don't want them to be attractive for encampments. Uh, and so the city is working with us on this particular uh, location. I guess there are about a handful uh, of you know five or six uh, homeless folks who have. Uh, 
uh, made camp there, and, and the city is reaching out to them to help connect them with services. So uh, we're kind of working in tandem to address a couple issues there. And these things probably come up in, in all kinds of places all over the state, I imagine. They really do. We have, if you, anybody who's driven I-69 north toward Lansing uh, or U.S. 31 north uh, beyond, you know, Grand Rapids, you've seen those large wooded medians. Uh, and those also can be an issue. So uh, right. anywhere you see a wooded area along the highway, they, it's, a, it's a potential location. All right. Well, we appreciate the update anyhow. And uh, imagine we'll continue to hear updates as time goes along. Nick Sharippa with the Michigan Department of Transportation with us on Fridays at this time on 95.3 WBCK. Thank you.